Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Ati Allah Ati Rasulu Unul Amri Minkum And always a reminder for myself and abdaka da jisu da'ifu, miskeen, and zalim, jahal and but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence and Allah's rahmah and mercy and the greatest rahmah and mercy is for Allah to guide humanity towards the love and the ishq of Sayyidina Muhammad InshaAllah Allah dress us and bless us from these lights. InshaAllah Hajj Shahid let's recite from uh, Surat Al-Isra, first verse inshaAllah. Surat Al-Isra the first verse describes the Israhi wal Miraj of Sayyidina Muhammad 17th Surah verse 1. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سبحان الذي يصرى بعبده ليلا من المسجد الحرام إلى المسجد الأقصى الذي باركنا حوله لنريه من آياتنا إنه هو السميع البصير صدق الله العلي العظيم صدق الله العظيم ملك الرسول الكريم يا حبيب العظيم ولا حي الله ولا حي لا حي يا قيوم 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 الله حي يا قيوم يا رب نزلت وزمتي والجبروت فدو قوتي والملكوت الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على الشيخ المرسلين إن شاء الله الله عز وجل guide us to these infinite lights and realities and that Allah عز وجل exalted be He who took His servant by the night from Masjid al Haram to Masjid al Aqsa. And alhamdulillah we describe the event of Sayyidina Muhammad and alhamdulillah for the people of Marifa, Gnosticism and the people whom wish to reach a reality, they know that their movement is not to Allah's Divinely Presence and Qawba Qawsaini wa Adna but their mirage is in the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad And Allah glorified be He that describing the way for the servant is that I'm going to lift my servant, glory be to me whom I lift my servant from their Masjid al-Haram to Masjid al-Aqsa. And alhamdulillah in this way of Gnosticism, this way of tariqah, Masjid is the heart. Qalb al-Mu'man Baytullah is the house of Allah Masjid al-Haram is that the servant, Allah is asking the servant that leave haram, leave the forbidden actions so that they don't enter your heart and that your heart becomes a holy precinct of, of purity and cleanliness, washing the heart, circumambulating the heart. And we've talked in the earlier months about the heart being the Kaaba, wash the heart with dhikrullah, with good actions and with your nazar. To be vigilant on the heart is the tawaf is that my life should be moving around what's good for my heart and not what's only good for my body. As a result of that heart becoming purified Allah will begin to describe that as a haramain. That my light and the love of the love of my reality, the love of Sayyidina Muhammad is occupying that heart 
it's a clean heart, washing heart continuously in the process of washing with dhikrullah. Not that it's a perfected heart, the perfected heart are for Nabiyeen, Siddiqeen. Then we come towards shuhadahi wa salihin whom they're trying all their lives to keep their hearts to be clean with dhikrullah, with salawats, with good actions and good, good amal. That I lift the servant in the night, in the layl means that they'll be trained at a time in which the world shuts off. The lifting doesn't happen in the daytime. That the miraj for the believer doesn't happen in the daytime. Allah is teaching for us that the miraj and my lifting, my coming to grab you is not while you're busy at work and everyone's using the system, everybody's busy on their networks, everybody's busy on their brains. But take a life in which you have Qiyam al-Layl, that you keep the night vigilant. All of the night was the first command. If you can't keep all of the night in worshipness, not internet and playing, then half of the night, then portion of the night. Then Naqshbandiya teaches at least an hour before fajr time, wash, have your tea, get ready and begin to do your night practices, your, your zikr, your salawats, all the etiquettes and adabs that have to be recited. Because this is Allah's command that, I'm going to grab my servant, I'm going to grab their heart in their layl, in their time when it's dark and they've isolated themselves from the world. As a result Allah draws near to that soul and begin to lift that soul from that reality. And then Masjid al-Aqsa is then the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad that the heart of the furthest boundary means the, the masjid within the heavens. And if the heart is on this earth and the masjid is the heart on this earth, then where is the masjid in Bayt al-Mahmur within the heaven? Means that house, that house of worshipness is the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad From that heart is all emanation of Qur'an, every majestic light and power emanating from that heart. And only Allah understood that Allah takes their soul and a miraj from their physicality into the light and into the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad And as a result Allah describing for them that in that vicinity that you're going, no doubt it's holy, no doubt that it's exalted and beautific, it's the location of where the Qur'an is being emanated. Means the reality is nothing that could be understood. Means that this, this dress that Allah want to take the believers that come into this ocean of power. That's why on Ramadan the opening and the dress, why the, the, the Laylatul Qadr in Ramadan on the 27th is to be dressed by the Isra wal Miraj. The dress in which Prophet taking from his haqqaiqs and his realities in the origin and the birth of his Divinely lights dressing upon the nation on Laylatul Qadr, night of power because it's from the oceans of power. And that Allah Sami'ul Aleem, the one whom is hearing, he's hearing and he's seeing. Sami'ul Basir that the sifat of, of hearing, it opens the attribute of vision. So this is a isharat for those who are doing their tafakkur because every moment for them is a israhi wal miraj, is a miraj. But at every moment in their meditation, their tafakkur, their contemplation, all their worshipness is for their tafakkur. They pray so that to make themselves to be disciplined. They use that salah at the end to make their miraj into the Divinely Presence. So everything they're doing is for that moment of that tafakkur, that moment of the miraj. They pray 
they give their zakat, they give and do their charity so that Allah open for them their miraj, that their soul continuously moving to Masjid Al-Aqsa. As long as they keep themselves in a state of, of haramain, of purity and cleanliness, that their heart to be clean and have this ishq and this love, they're continuously all their actions, all their usul is for that Allah grant them continuously their miraj. That their soul and their light moving with the light of Prophet and they pray that they be granted the vision and its reality of that movement, that proximity, all of its light and all of its dress. And then Allah gives the key at the end, a Sahmi al-Basir, Sifat al-Sami, the one whom hears and Sifat al-Basir, the all-seeing. That if you want to achieve these realities then opening a Sahmi al-Basir and on the Divinely face Sahmi al-Basir are the ears. Sahmi al-Basir, why it's on the ears? Because the ear is the door to the soul, the ears are the door to the soul. صدق الله العظيم بلغت رسول الكريم As a result of understanding that the ears are the door to the soul, the eyes are a window to the soul. So you can look through the eyes and you have a, a glimpse of somebody's reality but only Allah are using the door. When Allah says, enter the home through the proper door. Means what? Is that give your ear to Allah And that's why this nation is Samina wa Atana. We heard and we obeyed. And when you pray you go, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar means Allah's greatness and power and might that to open my ears Ya Rabbi and grant my soul to release and have a miraj. Your soul doesn't leave through your eyes, it leaves through the door. As soon as you hear and you hear with perfection, that's why the salawats and the nasheeds and when we meditate with nasheeds in Qur'an Means what happens? Allah is giving awliyaullah permission, use Sifat al-Samir. That the Sifat al-Samir begin to lower the gate on their ear. As a result of lowering the gate on the ear, the soul is free to move. And this is how the shaykhs are sending their soul out and begin to energize. At the same time, all the students, their lock is coming down in the association and then their souls are coming out to enter onto that ship as that ship immediately moves into the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad Nabiin, Siddiqeen, Shuhadahi wa Salihin and Allah with them, it's the best of company. So it means that the miraj is that the heart that been purified becomes the haramain, becomes the Kaaba of Allah becomes washed and purified. And we described before that your heart will have the love of Allah but filled with the souls of Nabiin, Siddiqeen, Shuhadahi wa Salihin in your heart. Because Prophet described, you will be with whom you love if a heart is clean and a heart has good actions. Even a heart can make mistakes, people make mistakes, people have bad character. But the heart is clean and filled with ishq and always moving back towards ishq, never goes towards hate. Means that hypocrite is the one whom loves and hates in an instant. When you love and hate there was really never any love. 
But when you love and you love and you love and you're disappointed but you love and you never leave that state of love then the heart is filled with Nabeen, Siddiqeen, Shuhadahi wa Salihin because the holy hadith you be with whom you love. If you love all my Prophets of Allah they're all a brotherhood. If you love them and respect them all they occupy your heart and as a result you love all my companions their Siddiqeen no doubt they occupy your heart, they fight for you to accomplish your love for Sayyidina Muhammad This is the greatest khidmat, they're not sitting up and having kebabs, they go, oh great we made it, oh heck with the rest of them. This is the greatest service that they can provide to the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad is watch over my nation, I love them. That keep within them your nazar, watch over them. If they have love they'll be with whom they love. When we love them no doubt they're occupying our hearts, they're watching and vigilant for ourselves, our families and our communities. And shuhada means all these awliyaullah whom they're ahlil basira, they operate with their heart. This is the reality of an everyday miraj. We are people whom train for every day to have a miraj to the Divinely Presence. As a result of this heart that's haramain, it becomes a duplicate of the Kaaba. That this love you carry with you all this love. It's not what you know in life but it's who you know, who you love. When you love them they accompany you. You'll be with whom you love and whom you love is always with you. That's the source of power, that's the source of inspiration, that's the source of good character and muhabbat. And as a result Allah describes, I lift that heart into the presence of Al-Aqsa, into the furthest boundary which is the Muhammadan haqqaiq, the Muhammadan heart, manzil Qur'an in which all of Qur'an and Divinely speech of Allah flowing through that reality of the heart. It's nothing that can be understood but Allah giving a sharat, but open up your Sami al-Basir, open up your Sifa to hear and to see. With that understanding the talk for tonight was about samina wa samt. That this life of ours and this characteristics of samina and samt is it impossible two attributes for people to master and that opens all these realities. Means the path is a path of samt. Silence. That's why all turuks, their first step is silence. Because people don't have the ability to control their comments, their mouth, what they say, they're accountable for what they say. The, every word that, that people put from their mouth has an energy, it has a cause and effect of what will come to the servant and what departs from the servant. So means these two attributes is the whole struggle that the tariqah students are struggling and in difficulty with. Stamina is that we took a path in which to hear and that's why Allah describes they have ears but they don't hear. Means to hear is what we've been talking about for the last week, is that I took a life in which to be silent. So I put a rock in my mouth and a life in which to perfect my hearing. If a servant can master those two they reach towards this ayatul kareem and that every salah be an isra for them, a miraj for them in which they're leaving badness and they're entering and praying in Divinely Oceans and each to their darajat. Some pray in an ocean of power, some pray in the presence of Prophet some pray in the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad And that's why the holy companions they swore, they swear, I swear by the one whom holds my soul in his hand. 
means they see their arwa, their light in this world of light on the hand of power. Means immensity of what is, is possible but what Allah wants from us is take a life of samina that to hear, do you really hear the guidance, do you hear the teachings? We're speaking but you're not hearing. And when you are vigilant with your hearing is that the shaykh just talked about this, this is the reality of this, 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 this and I'm absorbing it and bringing it into my life. Not that they hear it and two seconds later they go downstairs and they exactly come against what was just said. It's not but even two minutes after something is said somebody will actually do the opposite of what was said. So then they don't take a life of Samina and they wasting their time. Years they could be sitting thinking, oh I've been in tariqah for how many years? But it's not a prison sentence where you serve amount of time and then you're paroled and, and enter into paradise. It's a path in which to perfect oneself. If we live a life of, I have to master my Samina, that I hear and I obey. And in my life I have to hear the guidance and these are going to be comments I like, I don't like, I'm going to open the reality of my hearing. And if that opening of the reality of the hearing is opening and opening and opening especially with the isharat and guidance that they took the teachings and it entered in, they took the teachings and they entered in and then as a result they took a life of silence, stay silent. Your mouth actually will ruin anything you try to achieve. Some people have to make a comment for everything. It's like this, you're like that, this like that, this like that. Allah doesn't like that. Allah doesn't like comments. He chose for His Holy Prophet the way of silence. He chose for all the holy companions silence. They put a rock in their mouth not to talk. Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq carried that rock in its reality seven years. What Allah was dressing of realities from Siddiq al Mutlaq not to speak, not because he's going to say anything bad, these are perfected servants of Allah. What Allah was going to dress of its realities is in, unimaginable in its, in its immensity. But for us, we are of the people whom are continuously using our mouth in an inappropriate way, in an in, incorrect way and it's the vehicle for shaitan and as a result of the vehicle for shaitan then people are losing and as a result they gain the qadab and the anger of Allah If they can reach to this perfection because they want to be from Sami al-Basir. They want you to be open for me as Sami, well then keep a path in which you're silent. As soon as you're silent you're not going to talk, you're not going to come against and as a result you can clearly hear. The less you talk the more you're hearing. Some people they talk so much they don't even want to hear, they just want to wait till you're finished and then they want to now start making comments. So means these two attributes or these two realities if a servant can master them and put on a post-it note in your home, put a post-it note on your meditation area, I have to live a life of samina wa ta'ana that I heard and I obeyed, that I want to hear these teachings and really act upon them. And my life is to hear from Qur'an, act upon it. As a result of my sami and my hearing my samt and I keep a way of silence and a path of silence. I don't have to comment, I don't have to continuously try to correct things, give uh, was it even correction, they give all sorts of uh, whatever comments you call them. This is not to do with the comments of saying, mashallah, great, this, not that but the comment that somebody always has to say something back to correct most likely what they heard. These two are locks, if we can master these realities then the servant 
is ready and prime for a mirage and their mirage is into the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad through ishq and muhabbat, these gatherings and these associations. They are the way of immense love that you hear from what the shaykhs are describing that all oh, these beautiful lights that like birds we recite and we enter into their presence and this dress and lights that Prophet dress upon everybody. But everybody goes home saying, I wish I could feel that, I wish I could experience that. Well, it only requires that we put a, an opening upon the ears and a lock upon the mouth that truly try to take a path in which you hear it and that you're going to do it all the way from when you left the association and keep that way and that covenant of fulfilling what you heard. Otherwise it's lost and the hearings are never opening because they become a people whom which they don't hear. They just have ears but they don't hear the reality. And then they sit and say that nothing is opening and my heart is not opening. We pray that Allah grant us these openings and these lights and that this mirage into the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad and these Rasul Kareem, the beatific lights and merciful lights that dress the soul, dress the character and that the heart always to remain in a opening of love and ishq for Allah and His beloved Sayyidina Muhammad Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.